This is a project I've been working on with Salvo Proietto of Sicily. Salvo has shot 17 images in the burst mode with Ricoh Theta Z1 using the dual fisheye plugin. I'm going to take this project from start to finish and we're going to be focusing on noise stacking and cleaning up window flare. And if you were to shoot this with HDR, you'd be probably increasing the noise. So we're going to compare the noise stacked image on the left with a conventional or HDR image on the right. The difference is dramatic and obvious, particularly when you look at the blank walls in this area. Let's take a look at one of the images in the burst set. I want to point out what Lightroom is doing to the sharpening. Lightroom by default adds a sharpening of 40 to any raw file, and this will actually add noise to your image. Always reduce this to zero if you've opened your raw files up in Lightroom. You then want to copy and paste these sharpening settings to all the other images in the set. You get 16 images maximum in RAW+. Plus. Salvo's shot 17 images. We're just going to go ahead and stack 16, the maximum. You have the option of dragging one of the files to the top of the list to make it the key shot. That's not necessary in this case. All the shots are the same. So we'll go ahead and process. The RAW Plus software is free, but you're going to get a little bit of advertising. Then some standard adjustments you're going to do on any DNG file. With RAW Plus, you can underexpose your images quite a bit and bring up the shadows because there's no noise. At this stage, you should add some sharpening and a little bit of masking to constrain the sharpening to edges. You're not going to need noise reduction. Next, I'm going to use a mask to reduce some purple fringing near a door. Then I'm going to turn off reset sliders automatically. I like to keep my adjustments from one paint to the next so we can paint away this purple fringing with a new brush mask. So we'll go down and adjust the sliders a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And go down and choose defringe and crank this up. And then start to paint at the end of this beam. Okay, so you can see it's painting away that purple color there. And if we wanted to do a little more work on this, perhaps we might also like to decrease the exposure. And we can improve this a little bit with some saturation reduction and by reducing the exposure a bit. So we can go ahead and stitch this image and it's going to stitch directly depending on your workflow. And when I stitch, I'm going to adjust the yaw a little bit so the windows don't cross the stitch line. I'm going to do some additional editing on the equi rectangular. And here's the stitch result. Now, depending on your workflow, you may get a no compatible DNG message in which case you're going to have to rename the KD raw file in Lightroom. I just take off the KD raw prefix and add something, a suffix at the end to distinguish it from the original file. I'm going to call it test. And this is going to stitch with no issues. Let's zoom in and take a look at the noise in the image. And there's literally no noise in this image stacked in RAW+. Plus. Now we'll start editing the image. And first we're going to deal with the window flare using masks in Lightroom. 
In the mask panel, I'll make some rough changes to exposure so I can see the effect of my mask. You could use a radio mask, but I prefer a brush mask because I can more easily erase. And I'll start to paint with my mask. And shift click will give you a straight line just like it does in Photoshop. So I'll start to paint this in. And as I go, I'll be adjusting my brush size, the feathering, the density using my scroll wheel or shift scroll. And I'll work on this beam until it looks reasonable. And I can always change the contrast, the exposure as I go along. It may look complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it's really quite simple and straightforward. And I'll paint a little more on this beam. And I'll create another mask for working around the window. And I'll work around this window with a new mask. Shift click for straight lines. And continue painting around this window frame to get rid of the blue. And the great thing is I can adjust my exposure to get exactly what I want. I can even adjust the tint to get rid of a little more of the blue. And I'll make a new brush mask for dealing with the blue on the walls around the window. And I'll start to paint, getting rid of the blue. I'm not going to worry too much about the fact that it's too dark at this point, I can always adjust it in the sliders in the mask panel later. Just after sort of the general area that I want to deal with around the window. That's about what I want. I can alt click to erase instead of paint and a little more erasing while adjusting the exposure and perhaps contrast whatever helps your image this is quicker than adding a separate mask so i'll continue on painting and erasing and adjusting the exposure I want to feather the edge of my adjustment. Adjusting the density essentially controls the transparency of your painting. And once I'm reasonably happy with the edge of this, I'll go ahead and increase my exposure a little bit to get closer to what I, what I want in the final scene. And every once in a while, I'll take a look at the mask to see how clean my painting is and make some adjustments from there if necessary. This next window is going to be a little easier to deal with. I don't have to deal with the beam on top of the other window I was working on. So I'll go ahead and do some initial painting with a mask. Nice soft feather on the edge. Decrease my exposure, increase the density of my painting. And I'm not going to worry too much how it darkens the center. I'll go in and erase that later. So get the window frame the way I want. Again, using that shift click to draw straight lines. I don't like to overdo adjustments if I can help it. And just to recall, the Alt key when you're painting will switch to erasing. And again, using that trick of shift click for straight lines. Work my way back in and erase this mask in the center of the window. I could get in closer to the edges, make that a little sharper if I wanted to be precise. 
And I want to erase a little more of this dark area beside the window. So that's very close to what I want. And this is the overall result. And I'll go ahead and do the last window using similar techniques. So again, another brush mask, an additional hit with a feathered brush to reduce the blue flare around the window. You can set the mask to white on black or any color that you want. I like green. And the little check box at the bottom of the mask panel determines whether you see the mask or not. And this makes it easy to adjust your painting to get what you want. You have three brushes you can use, an A brush, a B brush, or erase, and I'm going to use erase and adjust my size and my flow and do some final touch up around the window. And a little more painting with the A brush around the frame to get rid of the blue. And then back to the erase brush to get rid of the painting in the center of the window. I'm going to go in later and I'm going to show you a trick on how to simulate a sky using masking. Okay, so that's good enough for now. And here's the final result up to this stage. And as a final touch, I'm going to add some realism to the windows by simulating a sky. And this is interesting how this works. I'm going to use a brush mask as usual. But in this case, I'm going to, as well as adjusting the exposure, I'm going to set the color to a blue. And you can do this in a mask. You can add a color to a mask. So I'll paint in the window. I could be a little more careful here. But I'm going to increase the exposure so any funny bits on the overlap won't be so noticeable. And then I'm going to use the erase brush to erase back into the white part of the window. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'll increase the exposure a bit. And here's the final image. And the last and final thing we'll do is retouch out the tripod in Affinity Photo. Once it's loaded up in Affinity, I'm going to go to an equi rectangular projection so I can work in 360. I'm going to spin the view around to look directly down on the tripod. And once I get close, I can click on the circles down below and enter precisely the pitch and heading that I like. Then I'll just visually adjust the heading so my grout lines are reasonably vertical. This will make it a little easier to select my tiles for cloning. I'll make a polygonal selection drawing around the tiles I want to copy and trying to simulate the angle of that wall next to the floor. I'll feather the selection a couple pixels. Go to the photo persona and duplicate the selection. And then move the duplicate into position. 
It's not a precise fit, so I'm just going to drag the handles. And I don't think anybody's going to notice the tiles are stretched a bit. Next, I'll merge the layers down. And then we'll add a Nadir logo. I'm going to place a, another file, a PNG with a transparent background. And locate it and resize it in the Nadir position. As before, you want to merge this layer down. and then clear the projection and you'll see the final equi rectangular result. Let's see how this looks in a 360 viewer, in this case Facebook. And this is exactly what we're aiming for in this project. Thanks for watching. My name is Clay Moorhead and here are some of my channels if you wish to check them out.